Well, hello. Good evening, I should say. Uh, tonight I'm actually recording this from my house. My uh, cat is helping me record tonight. I can see him back there. Uh, but anyway, uh, tonight's uh, lecture is about dealing with stoichiometry, uh, using the balanced chemical equation to predict quantities of reactants or products. Um, and in this particular case, we're going to go one step further. This series here deals with the idea of what happens if you have two different reactants that are known. In the previous problems, you only knew one reactant. So if I knew reactant A, I could calculate how much of product B I was going to make. But in this one, what if I know both reactants and I need to figure out what's going to happen? So I'm going to start this off with a little bit of an example, grilled cheese sandwich. I guess I was hungry when I was thinking about this. So let's say you want to make a grilled cheese sandwich. Very simple one. We could write this as a real simple equation. You can see right there, two breads plus one cheese equals one sandwich. I know it's a really boring grilled cheese sandwich. I like more on mine too. But just for the sake of argument, okay, stick with me. Um, that's our simple reaction, right? So our ratios would be a two to one to one multiple ratio or bread to cheese to sandwich ratio. Uh, down at the bottom, uh, there's a little uh, chemical reaction down there. So you can see that, you know, just like anything else, it could be a, a chemical problem too. So, in chemistry, a lot of times we need to be able to predict how much product we're going to make. I need to know how many sandwiches I can produce, given a certain amount of cheese and a certain amount of bread that I have in my kitchen. So, for example, I've got that in orange there, how many total sandwiches, complete sandwiches, can I make if I have 24 slices of bread and 18 slices of cheese? Well, let's take a look at that balanced chemical equation, right? Two breads plus one cheese equals a sandwich. So our ratios are two breads to one sandwich or one cheese to one sandwich. So how's that going to affect our outcomes? So here's our little mini wonder fractions. But now you can see I have two set up, one for each reactant. So if I start off with 24 slices of bread, I know that I'm in a two to one ratio of bread to sandwiches, so I could actually make 12 sandwiches from 24 pieces of bread. Taking a look at just the cheese, if I have 18 pieces of cheese, cheese is a one to one ratio, so I could actually make 18 sandwiches. So now I have two different answers. Can I make 12 sandwiches or can I make 18 sandwiches? And the key to this is the concept of limiting reactants. You know one of these two is going to run out first. You know we're going to run out of bread. We're going to have 12 sandwiches made with two pieces of bread, one piece of cheese, and then we're going to have some cheese left over. This concept is called limiting reactant. The bread is the limiting reactant. The, pro the reactant sorry, that runs out first is limiting. It limits how many sandwiches or how much product you could actually make. The cheese in this case is in excess. I have plenty of cheese, more than I need, and in fact I'm going to have leftover to it. So those are the two main concepts from these videos. Limiting reactant, the one that runs out first, limits the amount of product, and the excess reactant, the one that we have extra of, there goes my cat, uh, that you don't need any more of. So in chemistry, I'll use this Haber process as a great example of a chemical reaction. It's a reaction between nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas to produce ammonia, and it's actually a really important um, industrial chemical reaction. So given the example that I've got here, if I were to start with six moles of nitrogen and eight moles of hydrogen, how many moles of ammonia could be produced? Again, this is kind of like our sandwich problem. One of those two reactants is going to run out first, but it's hard to tell just by looking at it which one it is. Does the hydrogen run out or does the nitrogen run out? So we use two little mini dimensional analysis problems to figure this out. So here they are. You can see the first one I did was nitrogen. So if I start with six moles of nitrogen and I convert, well, it's in a one to two ratio. How do I know it's in a one to two ratio? Well, of course, Here's my 1 to 2 ratio, and that comes from my 1 of these to 2 of these ratio, right? So if I did this, I could get possibly 12 moles of ammonia. Now, am I actually going to get 12? We have to look at the other reactant first. Again, it's the bread and the cheese. We've got to look at both of them. If I consider hydrogen, 8 moles of hydrogen, because that was what was given in our product. Hydrogen's in a 2 to 3 ratio or a 3 to 2 ratio, depending on how you want to write it. When you do your wonder fraction, you get 5.3 moles of ammonia would be possible. So which is our answer? 12 moles of, hydro of ammonia are possible if we only look at nitrogen, and 5.3 moles of ammonia are possible if we only consider the hydrogen. This is kind of like our, our sandwich problem. We have to go with the lesser number. There's less ammonia produced in that second option, the one that starts with hydrogen. Therefore, hydrogen must be our limiting reactant. It runs out first, limits the amount of ammonia to only 5.3 moles, and we end up with some nitrogen left over. It was in excess.
bread to cheese. Don't even need that one at all. Have a good night.